Okay, so today we're going to look at CPU performance. I'm going to pause on this slide. There are three words. I'm going to give you a chance to have a guess of them. Okay, so the first one is clock. The middle one is cache. And the third one is cause. And these are three words that you'll be using this lesson to gain an understanding of the things that can affect the CPU's performance. So as we mentioned, the... Um, Specification content for today is looking at the common characteristics of the CPU with a particular focus on the clock speed, cache size, and the number of cores. These are sometimes referred to as the three C's, clock, cache, cores. I'll pause on the requirements for you to have a quick read through. So when we look at CPU performance, the, there are differences between CPUs from one device to another. So quite often you'll have noticed things like mobile phones, uh, your Chromebooks, desktop PCs, they have different uh, attributes or different characteristics of the, within the CPU that affect the performance. And there are certain factors that are um, to consider that affect the speed at which these perform, these fetch decode execute cycles. Um, and there's a number of things that can impact this. We'll look at the three sort of main things today, talk about them, and obviously uh, some scenarios where there are some uh, additional considerations that we need to make. So firstly, clock speed. Now, we mentioned clock speed in our previous lesson. So clock speed is the amount of fetch decode execute cycles that can be carried out per second. Now, clock speed is measured in hertz or typically gigahertz because we're talking how many billions of instructions. So modern day CPUs can do a number of billion instructions per second. So as I mentioned, typically uh, a modern day computer can do anywhere in the region of up to 4 billion instructions. And you might see different CPUs, some that will say that they'll do 1.7 gigahertz and 2.3 gigahertz. And that'll be because there's kind of a power saving mode. So things like Chromebooks, mobile phones, those sorts of things will have kind of a two stage sort of uh, clock speed. But ultimately all you need to be aware of is the fact that clock speed is the measurement as to how many search fetch decode execute cycles can be carried out per second. And obviously the impact on this is quite straightforward. The higher the number of um, gigahertz or the higher number of cycles that can be carried out, the more instructions that can carry, be carried out per second. Uh, reasonably straightforward to get your head around that one. Cache memory then, we touched on cache memory last lesson. So if you remember, cache memory is this super fast, possibly the fastest type of memory that's built kind of directly onto the CPU. And it's where those most frequently used instructions are stored. And the CPU can access that directly. Um, and it means that obviously the instructions that are most frequently used are able to be accessed in a super fast time, which speeds up that sort of process of carrying out fetch decode execute cycles. There is a scenario though uh, where this isn't the case. So if you, for example, have a massive amount of cache memory, and this doesn't really exist in CPUs, but theoretically, if you had a massive amount of cache memory, then it wouldn't necessarily speed up the process because it would still have to look through that memory in order to retrieve those most frequently used instructions. But generally speaking, a really small amount, a matter of kilobytes worth of um, storage for, again, as I say, those most commonly, most frequently fetched instructions. And then cores. Now, cores is an interesting one. So cores is the most sort of um, more common way for CPUs to speed up. So cores allow us to multitask, allows us to run multiple applications at the same time. Um, so in a scenario where, for example, we have a dual core CPU, that means that we've got two lots of each of the components for the CPU. So if you think back to our previous lesson where we discussed the von Neumann architecture and we looked at the MAR, MDR, program counter, and all of those sort of bits and pieces. In a dual core processor, we're saying it's got two sets of each of those uh, sort of setups, meaning that it can do two fetch decode execute cycles at the same time. In quad core, this is four, hex six, oct core eight, and so forth. And this is crucial because it's about how many sort of applications, how many different sets of instructions that, as I say, we can process simultaneously. In an exam, using the term simultaneously or at the same time will give you the mark either way. It's the same principle. Now, with this being said, the image down the right hand side gives you kind of an idea in a visual sort of way that a single core processor will process, for example, two streams of instructions working on one at a time, um, as it's only capable of processing one set of instructions, whereas a dual core will able to process them side by side or in parallel is another way of it being explained. In general, the more cores, the greater the performance. So in theory, if we had, for example, a two gigahertz processor, we're saying it can do two billion instructions, on a single core, still two billion instructions. On a dual core, in theory, we're saying two gigahertz times by the two cores, therefore four gigahertz, four billion instructions per second is the theoretical speed of that CPU. 
Now, obviously, as we mentioned, uh, there are some factors that can have an impact on our CPU's performance. Um, so, for example, when we're talking about the number of cores, if we've got a dual core or a quad core, even an opt core, so eight cores, the CPU's performance is only going to be enhanced if the program we're running is able to make use of multiple cores. So not every application that's been created will make use of a dual core CPU, in which case a single core CPU will run it just as fast as the dual core. So if we've only got one set of instructions to process, it doesn't mean that necessarily the dual core CPU is going to be any faster. Equally, there are other considerations with CPU performance. So it might well be that you have exactly the same computers um, and it's a case that your CPU in one computer is far more powerful. So it might have a much higher clock speed, more cores, more cache memory than the computer that's an identical twin. However, because those computers have both got very poor sort of low grade other components such as main memory or RAM or something like that, it might be that that's the limiting factor. So it might be that it's got an underpowered graphics card, for example, or an underpowered um, storage device, in which case there's um, performance issues that aren't directly related to the CPU, but they limit the CPU's ability to reach its maximum potential. And what I mean by this is that if you've got a CPU that's able to run, just say theoretically, four gigahertz quad core, decent amount of cache, but your RAM is really slow, your RAM's not going to be able to, or so your RAM being your primary storage, not going to be able to feed instructions to the CPU quick enough for it to be able to actually run at four gigahertz on those four cores. So it is a case that there are other components that can impact and affect the performance of the CPU.